he had these wooden clipboards, you know, the old clipboards he used to make in shop with the three pieces of wood. And I thought, well, you got a clipboard, you get you watch TV a lot and eat bean soup and get to real life. That's what I, I thought coaching was going to be all about. Just because you have a visual impairment does not mean that you're handicapped. Show them the way. Welcome to ID21. I'm Susan Meredith. And I'm Larry Souter. Mm -hmm. Young, Christian, athlete. And you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're I not. I can suit up with the best of them. Yeah. yeah? Were you going to be a pro athlete when you grew up? No, just a successful kid. Yeah, that's a good thing to be. Mm -hmm. You know, all the, the kids are the parents in different generations. They look at their kids and they say they're the worst ever. Mm -hmm. You're probably right. Yeah. Well, no, you, not necessarily. You a, no. no. You have a teenage daughter. I do, and she's a very good kid. She yeah. told me to say that, otherwise she would short sheet my bed tonight. And we <laughs> have some good kids coming up on the show today. Yes, we do. And we're going we to talk to them in just a few minutes, so you stay with us. Yeah, stay with us. We'll be right back. We feel like on the high school level, an athlete's the leader. Uh, you know, that's the one that the kids are looking to and, and is the role model. And if we reach them, then they're going to in turn reach other kids for Christ. Well, welcome back to ID21. Today's world challenges us as adults probably more than any other time in history. It's also a big challenge for young people because they are, well, they're young and they're also impressionable. Yes, they are. It's a hard time to be impressionable these days, and um, the world has changed. Values have changed. But you know, there are some things that never change, things that always work. And Such as? Well, compassion, integrity, Good sportsmanship. And perhaps these two fellows here. Yeah. We have some guests with us from the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Yeah. Glad to have you with us. Hi. Thank you. And your name is? Lance Brown. And your name? Steve Robinson. And is what is FCA? FCA is a ministry to athletes and coaches, and uh, we've been around really about uh, just over 40 years. We, uh, the purpose is really to present Christ to athletes and coaches, really in junior highs, high schools and colleges, and help them grow in their faith. So it's a very evangelistic ministry as well as kids that know Christ really help them grow in their faith because we, we can reach the athlete and coach at a young, impressionable age, and they in turn can really impact others because athletes are so looked up to. Uh, it was started nationally, not, not by a church but by a, a right, sports figure? Right, right, it was started by a uh, coach out in Oklahoma, Don McClannan, back in 1954. And mm -hmm. some people probably remember Bill Wade, who was quarterback of Chicago yeah, Bears, sure and did. played at Vanderbilt. He was one that, when he was playing pro ball, used to speak a lot. And uh, he was one of the men that uh, they, a lot of men played football. Vanderbilt took a blind leap of faith and hired an ex-big orange man. So you know the Lord's in a deal like that when they get Tennessee and Vanderbilt together. So. Must you be in sports to be in this organization? No, we primarily focus trying to reach athletes and coaches. Any kids who want to come to the FCA, they have groups set up on the school camp. It's kind of like a Christian club, and so mm -hmm. any kids, if they want, if they can walk and chew gum at the same time, then they classify as an athlete. We do ask that the, <clears throat> excuse me, the officers be athletes, and uh, since that's who we're trying to really target. We feel like on the high school level, an athlete's the leader. Uh, you know, that's the one that the kids are looking to and, and is the role model. And if we reach them, then they're going to in turn reach other kids for Christ. And that's sort of our goal. But it is our goal. Just speak to any parent out there who's watching this. Why should their kid be a part of this organization? Well, what are they going to get out of it? For one, we're, we're on more campuses in Middle Tennessee than any other Christian organization. Uh, and, and we're there in the schools to give them a, a spiritual encouragement during the week. Uh, to uh, give them a boost, uh, to remind them where their priorities are, and that's God first, and family and school, and uh, you know, just to encourage them in the values and principles that the Bible teaches, give them opportunity to see those things mapped out, give them role models as far as athletes and, and that type of thing. So, what flack do you have in dealing with public schools with this organization? Uh, you'd be surprised. It, pretty open. Uh, a lot of times administration's uh, very open to when things are offered for their athletes. 
And uh, so administration-wise and schools are fairly open. As long as it's student-initiated and they have other non-curricular clubs on this campus, then they have to allow us by equal access. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we don't, we don't have very many problems with that. Then we also offer, outside of that, uh, what we call adult chapters. And those are businessmen uh, that are willing to group, usually in a county, and come together once a month for accountability, devotional, and then also pr primarily are raising funds to send kids from that county to camp. So there's a reinvesting in the ministry that they grew up in. Lance, can you tell us something about the drug program that you have at FCA? Uh, the drug program that we're implementing actually this fall, and it's called One Way to Play Drug Free, and uh, there's three principles to it. First is a, a faith and commitment in Jesus Christ. Uh, then is a commitment to say no to drugs and alcohol, and then thirdly is accountability. We set them up with an accountability partner once they sign into the program, and uh, and then they have like five questions that they ask weekly of each other to see if they've drawn that line in the dirt and are really pl playing one way to play. That's drug free, and of course the faith, commitment, accountability, FCA, and uh, we we've implemented implemented this, and we feel like it's more than just a just say no program, which is great. But we feel like we need to give them something to say yes to, and, and that's Christ. Appreciate you being with us. Lance Brown, Steve Robinson, Thank thanks for being 9021. Thank when we come back, we have something for those who need an attitude adjustment. Yes. Stay with us. He uh, really stresses the team over the individual, and I think that's a real key in the continuing success of his program. We're a team, right? We are a team, yes. And uh, you are a pretty good sport, a team player. I'd say so. I'd say I am. And uh, mm -hmm. when you said you have a, a good team attitude about things. I do. I think attitude is real important. Okay. Now this is just a test. Only mm -hmm. a test. Okay. But if I took this pie, okay. held it at this angle, and All then right. smashed oh, it in your face. All right. Now don't even think about it. That's not a fair test. Okay. Now here is a guy that knows something about team attitude. Does he throw pies too? No. Uh, the only thing I can remember about wanting to coach was my uncle coached at a small town about 15 miles away from where our farm was. And one weekend I went down with them and uh, played some pickup basketball and then uh, went home and we laid in the couch, ate bean soup and watched games on TV. And I thought that was what coaching was. And then he had these wooden clipboards, you know, the old clipboards he used to make in shop with the three pieces of wood. And I thought, well, you got a clipboard, you get you watch TV a lot and eat bean soup. And, it's a real life. That's what I, I thought coaching was going to be all about, but I, I found out quickly uh, that it wasn't when I really, really coached. We get into everybody. We get into them as intensely in position as we can be. We want feet moving, we want hands moving, but we want to be in them as tough as you can be into somebody. This guy knows more basketball uh, it's, a, it's an old saying, but he knows more basketball, you know, than almost anybody I, I would think, I, that I can think of. You know, he's probably forgotten more than, than most people would ever remember. He uh, really stresses the team over the individual, and I think that's a real key in the continuing success of his program. The thing is uh, trying to be a team. I think that's the most important thing. We want to be the best team on our schedule. That doesn't mean we have the best talent, the best winning record, but we want to be the best team in terms of people liking each other, working hard, doing the, getting the most out of themselves that they have. Uh, each letter we make a word in team attitude, and uh, that's been a big thing for us. Uh, it's hard to keep that, and it's getting harder in today's society because it's obviously a very me an I-oriented society, and that's hard to get the we attitude. Uh, we said getting the most out of yourselves. I think in a, in a real team, you get the most out of each other because of how you inspire each other and you push each other with the right type of attitude. Well, with Coach Meyer, uh, if you watch him on the court, there's nobody that's ever going to uh, mistaken him for Heidi on the sidelines or anything like that. I mean, he's a fierce competitor, but I think Coach Meyer really shows that you can be committed to something, and I mean fiercely committed to something, but you still can treat people the way they ought to be treated. Off the court, Coach Meyer would and has done anything he can do for players to help them. I think that he shows that caring for the individual uh, and for what that person, the potential that person has inside of them is more important than, than the potential they have on the court or what they do on the court. And I think that's a really uh, a great lesson from Coach Meyer, that you can be tough with somebody, you can demand a lot of them, but in the end, they know that you're doing it for their benefit.
I'm not going to tell you my walk with the Lord is consistently strong. I think the pressures of what you do, if you were smart, it's sort of like exercise. And we all know we need to exercise and we won't have to sleep as much. We'll handle stress, but we don't do it. We all know spiritual exercise is more important, but we have long periods where we don't do that. And then when we come back and say, well, I'm never going to leave again. But we know that we do because we're human. And it's the constant fight of the human nature with the spiritual nature. And we're most spiritual when we're giving because that's the example of what Christ was. So if everything you do can be geared to being a giver and not a taker, to having an attitude where you're trying to help make other people better by not telling them they got to do this or telling them to do that, but by pitching in and working with them, that type of thing makes a difference. But I, I tell you, the balance you need in your life, if you didn't have some sense of spiritual uh, anchor, uh, there's no way you can do it. The pressures are just too intense in, in every, just about every area we go through in life today. When we come back, we're going to be meeting some really special young people. Hmm, Jane, I bet they're not afraid to have a little fun All now right. and then. And that's exactly what we're talking about. It's just for fun, this next segment. <laughs> Not long ago, we met some courageous and determined young people who taught us a few things. The occasion was the intramural wrestling tournament at the Tennessee School for the Blind. Here's today's Just for Fun segment. Just because you have a visual impairment does not mean that you're handicapped. It just means that you may have to do a few things differently on the wrestling mat. You may have to do a few things differently in life, but visual impairment doesn't have to be a handicap. And we're trying to start teaching the children that here in the Pee Wee Wrestling Tournament. Pretty good then. I won against Anthony Skiles and Scott Perry. How do you feel? You nervous? Well, a little bit on the inside. You got any strategy? Mm, a little. <laughs> What's your plan? What's your battle plan? Uh, take down. I got some techniques. What's your technique? Wrestling. The main thing that I get out of it is that is the satisfaction of knowing that the blind child, or any child for that matter, if even if I was in public school, the, the child has had the opportunity to test himself. And uh, I see that you, every time a child wins, it's fantastic. Uh, they know then the uh, joy of victory. I'm a virgin and I'm going to be uh, 25 and it's very difficult. And people say, how do you do that? Who's that? Well, welcome back. We have four guests at the counter today, one teen and three young adults. And we're going to find out about some of the challenges and temptations that they face in their life. Yes, we are. And we're going to, first of all, find out a little bit about each one of them. They're going to tell us who they are, starting with Lisa. Hi, I'm Lisa Blue from um, California originally. I've lived in Nashville a couple years now, a singer-songwriter, and presently, I'm a nanny. So. A nanny? Okay. A nanny, yeah. I'm Jill McAdams, and I'm originally from Nashville. Right now, I'm a sophomore at Table Lipscomb University. Very good. good to have you with us. All right, and, and Jason, you're a rose between all these thorns here. Is that right? <laughs> I'm Jason Jordan. Um, I'm originally here from Nashville, and I love to um, play guitar. Mm. 
And right now I'm in school at Belmont University, and I'm studying to be an a elementary school teacher. Okay. Very good. And the youngest member of our panel here today. I'm Summer <laughs> Foley, and I'm from Hendersonville, Tennessee, and I go to Good Pasture. I'm a sophomore. All right. Glad to have you with us. Yeah. Well, let's start off with some challenges and peer pressures and all those kind of things that young people face. What is the number one pressure that young people face today, you think? Just jump in there, anybody. I think today in our society, um, a lot of materialism goes on. I know at school, I see what you know people have, and I want, I want to have nice things too. And I think that's a big struggle for everybody because not everyone has the money mm -hmm. or um, access to things that everyone else has. What do, you, what do you think would be a good solution to that? Um, well, a solution for me is just to know who I am, just finding myself in the Lord, and um, really relying on that more than of what people, how they look at me and what they think of me by what I wear. Mm -hmm. And um, that's really helped me a lot. Maybe mm -hmm. stop buying the things we don't need. Um, we Americans today have everything they don't even need. And like, for me, I can't even decide what I want for Christmas, but I know I want something. Is it tough to share your faith at school? Some of you come from Christian schools, mm -hmm. some do not, and some are out of school, either on the, on the job, the workplace, or in school. Is it difficult to do that in, t in today's society? I think it's more difficult at school almost, because you see those people daily, and you, they, you know, you're afraid, oh no, if I say something, you know, you know you're going to see them every day, so you, you want them to, you know, think highly of you, or... And when you see somebody else out, you want them to know that you're a Christian, but it's harder, I think, to do it in school. I've never really been around anybody that's not a non-Christian, because I go to a Christian school, most of my friends are Christians, but... Are you labeled as a uh, goody two-shoes or something? Uh, sometimes you are by some schools, but you've just got to um, stick up for what you believe in, and um, you just don't let it bother you, believe in mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. So. Values have changed so mm -hmm. much, and there's so much peer pressure as far as, I mean, uh, many years ago, uh, it was a wonderful thing to be a virgin or to mm -hmm. save yourself for marriage, and now, it, is it almost the other way? Is it, uh, is it almost like a contest to see who can uh, be involved first, or, or how does that go? I think basically, like she was saying, I mean, if you know who you are and you, and you seek the Lord, then you're going to find your value in the Lord, and you're not going to have to search for other things. And I'm a virgin, and I'm going to be uh, 25, and it's very difficult. And people say, "How do you do that? Who's that?" You know, but there's temptation, just like everybody else. But it's a decision, and it's self-control, and that comes from the Lord. It doesn't come from me. You know, reading the Word, devotion daily, that's where the strength comes from. Can so. you say that to some of your your non-Christian friends? Oh, and sure. And what do, they, what do they think about that? They, they don't believe it. They really don't do believe me. Do they respect me. you for that, you think? You or better no? believe it. Whether they tell me or not, they respect me. I mean, just by, I mean, I, I feel like they, they actually feel condemnation and guilt around me for some reason because they, they couldn't do that, but they don't need to feel like that. What do you think young people need? What, are they, what do they want most of all today? No matter what they say, what do you Acceptance. think they want? Uh, Acceptance. Mm -hmm. Seems like everybody's going to go through a hard time in their life, um, whether it's a death in the family or whether it's um, a bad relationship or whatever it may be, you're going to hit bottom once in your life. Mm -hmm. And you, what, are you, what have you got there to pick you up? What have you got there to depend on, to lean on? And um, I think that's one reason that love or acceptance is very important and that's what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the That's Entertainment segment, and two of you are going to sing for us right now, Jill and Jason. What is the song? The song is called Blind Man. Okay. The song um, was a devotional song, and, and recently uh, the group The Cry put it to, to music with their band and just recorded it. And we just loved the song and sang it at church a couple places, and that's why we did it here. Okay, so stand by. The song is called Blind Man. Blind man stood by the road and he cried. Blind man stood by the road and he cried. Blind man stood by the road and he cried, he cried, oh. Show me the way. Show me the way. She cried, 
Well, that was great. It was young, good. Young people are so neat, and you know we need to teach them how to use their talents and give them some self-esteem, self-worth. Sounds good. If we could teach them by example, yes. Uh -huh. Teach them right values. Sure. Teach them good sportsmanship. Now, don't start that huh? again. Okay. okay. All right. Now, next week we have a show that uh, is kind of a potpourri. Potpourri, yes, including a lady who shampoos and blow dries her chickens. All right. Now, be serious. I am serious. She does do that. She does. And we also have a group called Dedication. Yeah, really. Five guys. Great music. We also have real good sportsmanship. <laughs> and we'll see them next week. All right. Stay with us. No. <laughs> <laughs>